Uh, hello, traders. Um, we're uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Just um, fired off a trade. I just thought I'd turn the camera on, even though we don't start for another. What is it? Uh, g'day, Steve from Chicago. Uh, g'day, Rick. Uh, even though we don't start for a few more minutes, I was just firing off a few trades anyway. So uh, I just thought I'd record these or record this one anyway as we're going along. So my break even, so we're trading one contract on the ES. So my break even here traders is um, uh, plus five. So uh, I'm not quite at uh, plus five. My stop has been halved. So my stop was five ticks by the way. So for members that is a classic 21B with a short term stochastic hook, a slingshot. So I'm targeting, uh, I'm up to six ticks here. We do have a pivot down below, so that's great. So generally, as we get closer, of course, and this is a central pivot, this will become what we call a pivot magnet trade. So we'll just see how we go. So by the way, I should just ask, can you hear me okay, traders? Let's make sure, but uh, just do a quick sound check. Make sure I'm coming across loud and clear. No one has said yes as yet. Someone could just type in, in the chat box, otherwise I'm gonna to have to restart, um, go to webinar. This sometimes happens where we don't have sound coming over. All right, so one tick off, uh, hitting my six tick target. Can anyone hear me there at all? Someone could just type yes in the chat box if you wouldn't mind. I'm gonna to have to quick, uh, you, uh, yes, oh, thanks Gus, much appreciated. <laughs> Very good, I was just about to uh, reboot. So we can see here traders, we've come down, we've ticked, we've hit plus five, so now I'm at break even plus one, so with a target of six ticks, which is a target that I really like on the two tick Renko. Now I went for uh, plus six over here, a little, little bit hard for you to see, not long after the market opened, we hit plus six, but I wasn't filled unfortunately. And uh, oh, that's right, I increased my target. And the reason I increased my target over here, I increased it to come down of a swing low, we hit, and the tail only just hit plus six, but I was going for plus eight. I thought I'd be a little bit greedy there. So it looks like I'm about to be stopped out of this for one tick here, traders. And we'll talk about going for smaller targets on your first contract when we get underway. So uh, traders, I'll just uh, leave this uh, continue as I uh, it's record <laughs> as I continue to get ready for the webinar. So 15 minutes and we'll be underway.
Hello traders, we'll be underway in a few minutes time. 43. I've uh, just entering 43, damn, I got in a bit early, but I've just gone short here traders, just on a, uh, uh, g'day Mark, g'day Steve. Uh, let me just adjust my stop here. Gee whiz, look at all my members again in here. <laughs> Away, Steve, bougie trader. We're not due to get underway for a few more minutes, but I uh, just saw this set up, so I thought I'd jump onto it. So we are short here on a 2B. So we've hit uh, plus four, so my, heart, my uh, stop is halved. I'll go to break even at plus five, so it'll automatically do it on the ATM. Now, I've just got to quickly grab my tea. I'll be back in a moment. We'll just let this work out itself, whichever way it goes. Back in a sec. How can I make you one tick behind me? <laughs> Very good. Well, Pep's gone to uh, break even a little bit early. So, uh, or oh, it's not break even, it's lowered my target a little bit early. We do have a pivot down below. So that's good, but it's not quite a pivot magnet trade. So, uh, one, two, three, four. Look, I might even leave my stop. Let me just quickly check. Traders will be underway in a moment. I'm just started debating. I've only hit plus four. One, two, three, four. So I'll leave this in place. Normally it'd be a break even at plus five. So we're just about to get underway, everyone. Oh, good stuff, uh, Mark. Well, if we look at this, certainly uh, the pivot just below. So that's good, Mark. So um, see how we go here. I'll be underway with the webinar in a moment. So traders, my target is plus six, by the way. I might even... Look, am I going to be a bit great? Look, I might even try to see if I can squeeze plus seven out of this one. It is a 2B uh, and I'm targeting a lower swing. So anyone that's logging in right now, I'll explain all of this as we get underway. We do have a PowerPoint to go through first, but I thought I'd just uh, fire off a few trades while we are waiting. Uh, g'day uh, Richard, Mr. Lees. So I do have a, a seven tick stop on this setup. So we'll talk about that too as we get underway. It's funny, uh, these are, 
live sessions. I'm amazed, <laughs> Richard and Mark and Steve, how many members I get attend these. Anyway, what time is it? Uh, nearly time to officially, well, I'm already recording, but let me now get up the uh, PowerPoint so I can, let's get the show on the road, shall we? Uh, let me just, sorry, everyone. Let me just get back to this. Where's the start? Here we go. Let me just uh, change this slightly to, whoops. Um, view. Get the show on the road. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about this traders. I thought I'd fire off. That's not good. The market's jumping up on me. That's not what I want to see. Anyway, traders, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's great to be here. And uh, it's not looking good for that little, uh, oh, thanks, Richard. Nice compliment. So I'm about, I perhaps should have uh, kept that uh, trade where it was. I hit plus four, but I was after uh, a little bit more than that. So traders, what's today's um, webinar all about? It's really about learning how to trade. Now it's very, very hard to compact all that's involved in a couple of hours, but I'll start to give you a, uh, g'day Tom, gee whiz, <laughs> talk about members jumping in here. Uh, but it'll be good to uh, give you an overview traders on exactly what I do and how I do it. And as you probably gathered, for those that haven't attended one of my webinars before, I, I, Jan, you're here too. We've got a lot of existing members have decided to uh, log in as well. Now I do need to pull up the disclaimer. There is a risk in trading. Uh, don't trade with the rent money. That's the bottom line. And also don't start trading live until you master the setups uh, on the simulator. And that's a beautiful part with modern day technology. We can actually trade using the simulator until we're ready to go live. And even then, and we'll be talking about this today, we'll be talking about starting off by trading the micros and building from there. Okay, so very important as I get this underway traders, and this is a constant battle that I now have. We live in a, um, a society that is very, very skeptical skeptical about everything. And traders, when you look at the setups, don't look for the reasons why they don't work, look for the reasons why they do work. The majority of the setups that I'm going to be showing you and teaching you some of them today are trend following. But you know what? Not everyone's going to work. Not every setup works out. And that's why we think and trade in probabilities of 20. The other thing is, um, Carol Dweck, who wrote that excellent book, Mindset, she said basically there's two types of mindset. We've either got those people that have a fixed mindset, usually ego driven, or they become so jaded with what they're doing that they're sitting back, arms folded, tried this, that don't work, this don't work. Well, this webinar isn't for you because really, and unfortunately, I got stopped on that trade, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw it on another screen. So, traders, this is all about growing and learning. And if you're already an experienced trader, uh, look at what I teach and say, how can I use this to improve what I'm already doing? Now, on the other hand, this is also very, very important traders is this, that a lot of traders can't handle the truth. They're looking for a get rich quick plan. Well, as I say regularly, get rich slowly. And so, I have a lot of traders that say to me regularly, oh, teach me something new. I know how to trade with a trend. I, I, I know this, I know that, but yet they're not consistently profitable. Traders, the simplest things will quite often make us the most money. And so it's so important traders that you, you, know, you learn the basics and you build from there. So in today's masterclass, I'm gonna teach you how to fish. We've all heard this statement before, give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day teach a man to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. So I'm gonna be showing you some core setups that I use and why they work so well. Now I'm also gonna pull no punches. I'm gonna tell you how it is, which means some of you will probably log out and say, you know, stuffing, he's, not, he's being too direct or he's being rude or whatever. The thing is though, we're trading against some of the best in the business. We're trading against traders that have been trading for many, many years. Now, fortunately, day trading uh, is not rocket science and you're gonna see what it really is very, very soon. However, we're trading against a lot of people that are very disciplined. 
they have a strategy. They've got that, um, that house edge, if you like. And as I say down here, success is never due to one thing when it comes to day trading, but failure can be. In other words, when we day trade, there's a lot of moving parts. You know, they're in time, they're not difficult to pick up. But on the other hand, failure can be one thing that is such as moving a stop or counter trend trading before you're consistently profitable as a trader, etc. So there's a lot of things there that can really hold you back. So who's this webinar for? Well, it's really for those that are seeking for a part-time or full-time income. Uh, if you're new to trading, if you're a struggling trader or an experienced trader looking at improving your bottom line, then this masterclass for you is for you. However, day trading is not for everyone. Now, this is where sometimes I know I offend some people, but it's not for dabblers. In other words, you can't be half pregnant traders. You've got to be committed. You've got to become a student of the markets. And that is, you know, once again, this ain't rocket science, but you've got to really put a couple of hours a day into this. You can't, you know, flitter in. And you look, maybe if you're a swing trader, all right, you might have a couple of stocks that you follow. Um, but if you're a day trader, you've got to get the screen time because this really is about um, pattern recognition. You've got to be oh, a student of the market. And, you know, a classic question I get every time I run a webinar um, for potential members to join us is how long will this take? Well, I've got members that have been with me for years. I've got others that have been with me years for years that are also full-time traders as a minimum. You've got to treat this as a 90 to 180 day internship. You really do. So what are we going to cover? I won't go through all of these key points. It was in the uh, information email that we sent, but I'm going to really show you how to really start with a small account and how to really build that account. And then we'll get stuck into some golden setups and how we look for those setups, where we enter, where we place our stop, etc. Now, why should you listen to me? I've been doing this now for 27 years. Fortunately, I've been financially comfortable enough to employ full-time traders, consultants, CTAs, uh, software programmers, um, and, and really purchase just about everything along the way. And you know what? Some of the best strategies um, uh, come off some of the um, uh, best indicators, which are free. They're basically available on every trading platform. If there is something better, I'll tell you about it. And we'll look at those when we get to them. So traders, this is what most traders do. Hey, this is what I did. You name it, I purchased it. Okay, I've got, uh, I must admit, I cheated a little bit. And I'll tell you what, I used to own a, a software company. We used to, I used to provide a charting platform for stock traders here in Australia and provide the data. And so I used to have a traders library. That's not the library there, but I had a library that my members could actually borrow books from. So that helps. So when people come to my home and say, I've got hundreds of books on trading, it wasn't because I was fanatical. I used to own a traders library. So that sort of helped a little bit. But what that also did is gave me a massive head start over the majority of traders. And so my research library, and actually, um, what I should have done is turned on the camera and said hello. This is what I normally do. Um, and of course, I've got a lot of my, my members here. Is the camera going on? Let me see here. Maybe the camera's not going to go on. That's strange. No, you're not going to get to see me. Never mind. <laughs> Let me just try once more. Don't know why not. Uh, that's strange. Very strange. Okay, never mind. You're not going to be able to uh, see me today. Don't know why the camera's not working. Uh, so I've got, um, as you see in the background here, if I turn the camera on, I've got a massive library here of also not just books, but research reports uh, on indicators, the wolf wave and, and many, many other things. And most of you know how much I, I talk about really promoting and really, um, uh, you know, taking notes. And I've got uh, close to, I think it's 60 of these now, research books. And if you can read it, it says live trading R&D and I date these. And so over the years, I've amassed a, a massive library. Now, you may be thinking, what the hell has that got to do with trading? It's got to do with everything traders. 
because if it's out there, I've probably seen it. So I've got hundreds of um, folders on everything from trading platforms through to courses, etc. I won't even start talking about the indicators that I've purchased or that we've coded, hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay, so really what I've discovered, and sorry, just there, I didn't turn my emails off. Let me quickly get rid of those. Let me just quickly do that, here we go, is that I've discovered the Holy Grail. And it's something which I know many of you have heard. And it's a combination of simplicity, consistency, discipline, patience, that's the Holy Grail when it comes to mastering the art of, the art of day trading. You can't go and code a system and expect to sit back. Yes, I've seen systems that will return five, 10, maybe 15%. But as day traders, you know, there's nothing more powerful than the greatest computer in the world, and that's us, that's our mind. And one of the reasons is, oh, so many strategies look fantastic and they, they work brilliantly in a trend, but the market's only trending 15 to maybe 25% of the time. So we've got to learn to visually recognize these patterns. Now, initially, Mastering out of day trading can appear to be a little bit like, or it's like drinking uh, out of a fire hose. Okay, now as your trading coach, my job is to make it as simple as possible. And with that being said, you know, we've got to approach it, and I call it the Goldilocks rule. And, you know, anyone can learn this if you follow this rule. And that is the Goldilocks rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. Uh, not too hard, not too easy, just right. In other words, when we go to the chart, so I may be talking about a, quite a number of different trade setups, etc. but I want you to write this down. The 34B and the 2B are really the only two setups that you start with. If you're a brand new trader, the 2B, by the way, is the number one. The 2B is the number one. So if you said to me, um, I just want to focus on one setup, one time frame, well, actually, that's, that's problematic, as we'll talk about when we get to time frames, because we need to allow the time of day that we're trading. But you start off with that. That's how you master the art of day trading. And of course, I, and by the way, this is being recorded and I'll answer any questions if you don't mind at the end of the webinar. Is it today we're only gonna cover really scratch the surface, but I promise you I'll give you some good stuff. Now, I wanna start off with looking and starting to set some income targets. Now, uh, many of you have heard me talk a lot recently about Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's a neuroscientist um, at the Stanford University. And there's now a huge amount of science-backed research now coming out, which is really backing the need to setting goals, reinforcing about having a trading plan, etc. And traders, one thing I can swear by is this. Winning traders are willing to do the things that losing traders won't do. Most traders won't put together a business plan. For an example, to show you this one here, where uh, I run private coaching groups, and we've got some of the members I've mentioned here in some of my private coach, coaching groups. And you know, one of the things I look for from them is straight away is let's put together a trading plan. This is a business. If you want to earn the big bucks, this is what you've got to do. Fortunately, we've got templates for all of this, but you've got to approach it. And what Dr. Huberman has now discovered is that when we start to implement these sorts of steps, we then get a massive um, uh, uh, dose of dopamine, which is also known as the feel-good drug. Likewise, when you start to tick off your trades, for an example here, is that as you tick off your trades or you start keeping records of your trades, and there's a, I won't go into the reason why we use this particular, we've got a whole range of these, but uh, look, I'll very quickly, if you've been struggling with your trading, we might start you off and you might be really, it's a concept that's very rarely spoken about. It's called um, uh, the, the psychological damage that has done the traders that have blown their account two or three times. It's rarely spoken about, but it's a real thing. How do you repair that? And there's a process we go through. But what 
um, uh, Dr. Huberman has discovered is that when we complete these forms, particularly when we do them uh, with a pen and by hand, uh, it actually makes us feel good. That's why ticking off a checklist is good. And that's why so many people become quite committed to doing that because scientifically now we know it releases um, dopamine. So trading is a business. And so we've got to set goals and there's scientific reasons for that now. So let's quickly start with this one is I want to show you really how to go from, or how to target 500 to 10,000 a week. Now, before you go and say, oh, here we go again, or traders, if you don't have a plan, once again, you're not going to get there. Unfortunately, what we've got uh, for all of our members, a whole range of tools that you can use in putting together your business plan. Okay, so we've got a range of tools that we can use. Now, how are we gonna get there? So let's just look at this. For a moment, the first thing we need to consider, remember I mentioned timeframes. For an example, the time frame we're in right now comes down to number one, the time frame and our account size. So as I say to traders, you've got to earn the right to start trading the big contracts. And so many traders suffer from the concept called FOMO, fear of missing out. When you first start trading, even if you've got 100,000 in your account, the best thing you can do, master the setups on the simulator, go to a micro, you've got lots of choices then before you go to the big contract. Now I should also mention, the setups that I'm gonna teach you today, you can use on Forex, futures, stocks, it doesn't matter, crypto if you like crypto, it does not matter. As long as you've got volume and some volatility, the strategies work on any market. Now. Right now, we're in what we call the Globex session. The Globex session is the market opens up uh, after it closes for an hour at 5 p.m. Central and reopens at six. And so what we've then got here is the Globex market. So we can, it's, the Globex market is a lot slower than say the New York market. Now initially, today I'm gonna to be mainly focused on trading the big contract on the ES. We're gonna be looking at trading the two tick time frame. Now, we've got a rule which never ever you ever break is the 2% rule. You never ever risk more than 2%. Traders, if you do, the trading gods will come down and will give your money to someone else. Very important, as you build your account over a period of time, you lower that down to 1%. Yes, your return on equity may be lower, but trust me, it makes trading much easier. Now, because we're trading after hours and we only need a two tick chart, and that's because of the speed of the market, if you were trading with a maximum stop loss of eight ticks on the ES, that's $100, you'd need a $5,000 account. Now, you, there's no need to keep all of your money with your broker, and it doesn't matter which broker you go with, okay? But you, you need to have, you say, put 3,000 with your broker and have some money in reserve. Now, quite often, and usually we'll get away with a six tick stop, hence so you'll, I'll be look, referring to a $4,000 account. But if you looked at today, even a four tick, the close of a New York session was very, very fast today. Um, I think we're at what, we traded about 2.4 million contracts and you're almost really, and even the six tick was very fast. And so you can see that your risk is going to be a lot more. So therefore you need a larger account. Now, what you can do then of course is drop down and trade a number of micros. So if you don't have, so if you've only got 5,000, what you might then do is say, okay, I can trade five micros instead of one big contract. So there's a lot of alternatives. So whether you're trading um, uh, the ES, the NQ, oil, the black gold, uh, the Euro, you know, so account, balance is very important. So let's assume here, we start off with a $4,000 account. We'll look at the smaller account in a moment. And our target is 100 a day. And I'm gonna show you how I romp that in and how you can romp that in, in the next 30 minutes, we'll be looking at the charts. Let's focus on the ES. Two net five tick trades a day, okay, will get you 100 
dollars a day. And we'll just look at the trades I've fired off in a few minutes and see how many hit five ticks, by the way. Okay, so that's uh, just two what I call scalps a day. What if you, and, and sorry, and the important thing there is this. If you start off with $4,000, and my apologies, I skipped over this. You start trading a second contract when you double your money. You've got to be conservative, okay? If you're, if you're old traders, there are bold traders, but there are no old, bold traders, meaning you've got to apply proper money management to your trading. So here, once we double our money, and it would actually take us uh, nine weeks before we could start trading two contracts. Within 30 weeks on this basis, we'd have the potential of getting up there to earning 10,000 a week thereafter, starting with just 100 a day. Now, what if we increased our target to 150 a day? We're there in 18 weeks. And the last one here, I think it's the last one, is uh, what if we went for 200 a day? which in the Globex session over usually over a two to three hour period, you should eas eas easily achieve that. Now, let me put the proviso in. As we head into the summer months in the US, sometimes it can become very slow. Now, what we'd then do is drop down to a one tick chart, which I'll show you as well. Now, if we average 200 a day, you're up to your 10 grand a week, weekly within 12 weeks. Now, that's three ES sixth tick trades a day. Or we could look at another way. It's, if we want to cut down, that's five four tick trades a day. And the reason I say that, it's so much easier to what I call scalp to pick up four to five tick trades uh, on the ES. So easy, but we'll look at that closer. And last of all, look, if you're getting 300 a day, um, now with that there, that's for a serious trade if it's going to put in there the good three to four hours after hours. Now, during during the New York hours, uh, either you're trading micros with a four thousand dollar account, um, or you're really scalping. Okay. Now, something that uh, most people don't want to talk about: how many trades do I realistically need to execute to achieve that goal? Because they're not always going to be winners. We've got a concept, it's called probability erosion. You might walk out of the room and miss a trade, etc. So on the ES, it's $12.50 a tick. There's four ticks to a point. Let's just say like right now, we've got a six tick stop and we're targeting six ticks. And let's just say we've got a 70% win-loss ratio. Uh, our commission's $5, we pay less than that, but let's just say $5 and 200 a day. You need to consider, I'm probably gonna have to execute eight trades a day. Now, if I can increase that to 80%, I only have to uh, execute uh, five trades a day. What trades are gonna give those to you? The two Bs. Remember your two Bs are your highest probability. Now, let's drop it back down again to six and six, 70, 30, and I'm after my three trades a day. That's 12, uh, 300 a day, that's 12 trades. Now that may sound like a lot, but let me tell you why, uh, just looking at the screens now, we would have already had at least six trades in the last hour. So, and we'll look at those shortly. <clears throat> now, I've already mentioned the micro ES, and this is from uh, one of my members here just on the micro, so you can get going really five to $700. So even if you've got five to $10,000, earn the right to trade the big contract. In other words, um, you, there's two things you need is besides having confidence, you've also got to have what we call competence. And we build that over a couple of months of trading regularly. Now here, if we started off with a micro, uh, let's say $700 account, working on a 2% rule. If I earn just $20 a day, that's the equivalent of $200. And the micro, I should say, is 10% of the value of the big contract. So basically going for $20 there, 
what happens is here, as soon as your account gets to four or 5,000, you can go from trading five micros over to the big contract. But what it shows here is within 38 weeks, if I average that $20 a day, I've got that potential of hitting 10 grand a week. Now, for the experienced traders that look at this and say, what, trading 100 micros? No, you'd be trading 10 big ones. That is, once you build your account, uh, and here you're up 14 or 15 weeks, now's the time to consider jumping up to the larger contract. And, I, and I'll say, during the Globex session, you've got plenty of opportunity. Now, Traders, what if it's only $10 a day? So let's make it super conservative for those that are perhaps super conservative. What if you only earn $10 a day? Okay, well here, once our account hits 4,000, which would take us 32 weeks, so you're at home being super conservative uh, and maybe money's tight and maybe you are very conservative, okay? Once we hit four grand, we then go to the big contract. Now, what the equivalent then is, 10 on the micro, that's 100 on the big contract. It would take us 30 weeks from there to then get to 10 grand a week. But by the way, your account, your target may only be three or 4,000 a week. We're all different. Here's what it means. It's gonna take us 62 weeks, okay? Um, uh, let's see here, and let's allow for a month off, 66 weeks, that's 16 months, only one year and four months to a financial life of freedom. It's okay, that's what it really means. So where you end up financially really depends what you start doing from today, just $10 a day trading the micros. That is the true potential. Do you know what holds most people back? what they say to themselves, oh, that can't be done. This can never be done. Rubbish, it's your own thinking. And you know, it really gets back to that having that growth mindset. And I'm gonna show you when we get to the charts soon, how to do it. Okay, now a couple of really core things here is, as I say, and you may remember the great movie City Slickers, is Curly there was saying to, um, uh, to uh, Mitch, Billy Christa's, um, characters towards the end of a movie. Do you know what the secret of life is? Curly holds his finger up, just one finger. And Mitch says, your finger? He says, one thing, just that one thing, you stick to that and the rest don't mean shit. What's that one thing? That's what you've got to find out. Now, when it comes to trading, I'm gonna tell you what that one thing is. I'm gonna make it easy for you. Number one, it's finding the right strategy. Okay, and the one thing comes down to money management. The one thing there is never risking more than 2%. When it comes to strategies, having one strategy. The next thing when it comes to a trend, trading with the trend, just the one thing can make a difference, massive difference, make or break you. So if we look at what Mark Douglas says, unfortunately Mark passed away a couple of years ago now, far too young. Uh, wrote the excellent book and if you don't have it, the number one book, it really should be every trader's Bible, the disciplined trader. Here's what he says in that book. To become an expert, choose one simple trading system that identifies a pattern, preferably one that is mechanical instead of mathematical. So you'll be working with a visual representation of the market. So what that comes down to is you, you want to have a strategy that is rules based. Now, this is where so many traders say to me, I want, you know, teach me something new, teach me more setups. And if you remember that great movie, The Karate Kid, where he wanted to move on, but of course that's where master says, wax on, wax off. You've got to master the fundamentals. And this is where I lose a lot of traders because you're just not willing but to, to put the time and effort into this. And Linda Rashke, who many of you, uh, many of my members here hear me talk about Linda all the time, wonderful lady. Uh, as she says here, let me say the majority of the professional S&P traders I know tend to specialize in just one pattern or trade just one style. Intellect has nothing to do with your ability as a trader. It's not a function of uh, success. It's not a function of how smart you are. That's hard 
to accept in a society that puts premium on intellect. And uh, Bruce Lee, it's not a man that's oh, kicked 10,000 kicks, it's the man that's practiced one, one kick 10,000 times. And traders, that one kick is the 2B. We will look at other setups, but it's the 2B. Now, when it comes to trend following, there are some fantastic books on why we trade with the trend. Now, if you're a member of mine, you know I talk about counter trend trading all the time and point them out. I just don't trade them live in the room because it's like traders have this thing where they just want to try to pick mark tops and bottoms. And it's so easy to get it wrong. And that's why it's so important that we trade with the trend. So in a moment, when we get to the charts, there's a couple of things that we need to consider, we need to obey. Number one, we never ever risk any more than 2% of our capital. Okay, so on the ES, if you've got a six tick stop, uh, you need to be allowing around $4,000. Okay, because six ticks is $75. Now, if you're gonna start off by trading the micro, that would be $400, okay? And your risk would be $7.50. Now remember, before you turn your nose up and say, well, hang on, oh, I don't wanna trade a micro, I wanna go straight to the big contract. Traders, be careful of that. Um, and what I know is with trading is also, if you're a compulsive person, if you, uh, uh, we, we tend to bring our personal challenges to our trading. If you're short of money, uh, if you've got desperation, you'll bring that and you, to your trading and you'll start revenge trading. You'll make all sorts of mistakes. Start with the micro then get to this one. Next one is we trend trade only until we're consistently profitable. And as some of my best traders say, they'll never ever counter trend trade. They'll just remain as permanent with um, our trend traders. Uh, when we first start off, very important, we limit the number of setups we trade to, to a maximum of two. Once you own them, you may choose to add another. For an example, the uh, 13B trend continuation or the 21B, there's some fantastic other setups that you can introduce uh, to give you additional setups, but that's something you do in the future. Once you, once you own a setup, then you can consider that. Then next one, discipline, patience, focus. Now, you'll hear me talk about the 80-20 and Dick Diamond who wrote this excellent book, it's not a big book, it's only about 160 pages, is that uh, as he says there, he'll only trade what he calls the 80-20 trades, trades that'll produce a profit. Once again, for us, that's our two Bs. Certainly you're gonna still have a run of three outs every now and then, three losses in a row, but over 20, it kicks butt. But the bottom line is if you're looking at a marginal setup, he just won't take it. To reinforce that is Marty Swartz. Now Marty's 78 now. He was actually written up in the very first book, um, uh, a Delta, a Delta Delta for 2B. Now, and I will answer this one because this is actually very relevant right now. So Delta just asked with such high volatility in the current market, what setup is best suited? Well, number one, and the only reason why, and I say this to be the setups I'm gonna teach you when we get to the charts won't work, is one, if you don't follow the rules, which are really straightforward, or if the market is moving too quickly. So you've got a choice in fast moving markets. Either you increase the time frame, okay? Because if it's too fast and it's not tradable, you're more likely to be stopped out, of course. So it comes down to having a higher time frame. But what comes with that, it's a two-edged sword. High time frames mean we generally need then a larger trading account. So that's when we need to then perhaps drop down to a micro or cut down the number of contracts that we're trading. And I'll perhaps show you that some of those when we get to the chart shortly. But with Marty Swartz, another top bloke, but this is something that um, I just wanna point out because you know, try to sell time scalping, you know, or can you really get 80%, 75%? Of course you can. You know, as um, uh, Marty says, I'm a scalper. I'm in and out, always in and out in five minutes. 
One thing I love about scalping or short-term trading, I've got a smaller stop loss. I have no overnight positions and it suits my personality. For some traders, you may be better suited for swing trading and not day trading. But as Marty says here, most books on trading say you only have to be right three or four times out of 10 if you cut your losses quickly and let your profits run. That doesn't work for me. I cut my losses quickly, take my, I need to be right seven or eight times out of 10. Uh, right, oh, thanks Delta, yeah. So the other thing he says here is red light, green light, allowing a trend to be, he uses a 10 EMA. I use a five and an eight. We use a whole range of EMAs, but it's his favorite indicator uh, to determine the trend and see if you look at, for an example, uh, if you use a five period EMA, I love a five period and an eight, of course, on the tick charts. Now what a five period does, it displays momentum. So when you see you've got, your, say if you're going long and you've got a five EMA above say a 13 or a 21 or a 34, that shows that the momentum is trading above the trend, which is your higher time frame EMAs. Simple, simple stuff. You know, as Richard Branson says, any fool can make something look complicated. Okay, simple stuff, but it works. So we want to be trading with the trend. And as you'll see, we want to be looking for the dips and the sell, the rallies. We want to go with the flow of a river. We don't fight the current. And so the way I put it here is, is this. You'll see that I use three time frames. Uh, you can easily get away with two, by the way. Now, if I remember, I'll just reduce it to two when we get to the charts. The dark blue line represents your higher time frame. We want to be looking for a retracement, a pullback, and trading in the direction of the higher time frame. And that is where it's like the tide. The tide changes, and that's where we then get our counter trend trades. Once we can identify a change in trend, and we do that generally uh, by we're looking at, of course, uh, an uptrend. Uh, a bullish trend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. That's what defines a bullish trend. When we have a change in trend, a bearish trend, that's a series of lower highs and lower lows. But there's things that we can identify to help us pick that change in trend. But that's one of our key rules. Now, when it comes to trading with the trend, look at all the different options that we have. Okay, you've got a 13B, 21, 34, 89, rule of one, rule of two, that's only for range range charts. You can trade the Renko tails, um, excuse me, you've got your two and three Bs, which are your best. Uh, you've got your pivot magnet trades, which is what I was looking for, as you'll see when we get to the charts before, and we didn't get it. Um, so there's a whole range of those sorts of trades. Now, and uh, here, when it comes to the pivots, just a couple of quick slides from members. I now swear by the pivots. Pivots traders are, are a, what we call a predictive tool. Okay, so most um, indicators of course, and they call them indicators because they indicate where price may go. But because so many traders trade pivots, they become predictive. A little bit like fib levels to a degree or prior swing lows and, and swing highs. But the pivot magnet trades, when we sell or buy into the pivots, okay, right, pivots are kicking some serious butt. They do nearly every day. As long as you've got a trendy market and you're buying or selling into a pivot with the trend, that's really the secret. But then you've got, you know, 34Bs. Now, the 34B is not as good as the 2B, but here, percent possible here, pro, um, sorry, profitable, 82% um, and it's just consistent. Now here, this is um, Dave from Seattle, one of my members here, 34 Bs and two Bs by the way, 34 Bs and two Bs. Now what you'll see, it's interesting with a lot of the traders, they might change their oscillators on the bottom, um, but what doesn't change is the, the sequence or the EMAs that we use, uh, 34 Bs. Um, he picked up, uh, this is going back, gee, was that's back 2019. These setups, and this is from another member, 
Okay, uh, 21B, 34B, that would have been a, a 2B and so would have that one been a 2B. It's about waiting for the trends. That's what it comes down to. And I'm not gonna go into the CT trades um, or change, but, and you may think, well, Ray, you talk about trading with a trend. Why have you got so many setups? It's because I've got over 10,000 members I've got over 200 in um, uh, trading classes and some of them are very, very experienced. So you've, we basically got a whole basket full of setups. Like for an example, a T19 is where you only have divergence on your lowest time frame. That's also the lowest probability. But when we get to a 2D or a 3D, that's two divergences and three div or even one, that's where you got divergence on the highest time frames. So which is going to have the most influence on a market? Well, when you trade your lower time frames traders, that's where you have a lot more what we call noise in the market. When you've got divergence on the highest time frames, that's where we really start to sit up and take notice. As we say here also, once, and I keep reinforcing this because this is what traders don't want to hear. Give me the basket full, give me them all, and I'll trade them all. Become a specialist. Who earns the big bucks? Is it the general doctor, the practitioner on the street corner, or is it the specialist? It's the specialist. You know, and just trading these 2Bs and 34Bs give you, gives you a ton of trades. Okay. Let's consider the logic behind the best of the best. We're trading trend continuation strategies that are in harmony with the higher time frame. So the issue is not whether or not these will work traders, it's whether or not you will follow the rules. Now I'm not gonna go through the fundamentals of, of everything for you, because I wanna get to the charts. No doubt you're chomping at the bits too for me to do this. But a couple of things, we must consider every single day red flags. What's happening news-wise? Uh, for an example, tomorrow we've got um, uh, factory orders, that's not but the Jolts report. Now, the two favorite sites that I use are Econoday and Forex Factory. And the reason I look at Forex Factory is because we also, um, uh, we do a lot of after hours trading and I run a couple of trading rooms after hours. Now, with what you've also got to be aware with the red flag news announcements also is this, just because it's not mark red, doesn't mean it doesn't move. Like the Jolts report is a big market mover. Now, for those that decide to join me after today, I want you to remember the session one folder in the coaching folder. There's a red book there of red flag news and announcements. So the Jolts report is going to jolt the market, trust me tomorrow. Um, then the first of every Friday of every month, by the way, we've got the non-farm payroll. That's a big market mover. Let's not forget the huge one this week, <clears throat> excuse me, is FOMC announcement. That is going to be huge. Okay, so we're expecting a rate rise there. So you've got to be checking uh, these news announcements because these are what we call account killers. They really are. Um, let's see here, All right, and a couple of other things. Uh, this is absolutely essential. Of course, we need to know where our entry is, and I'll describe that when we get to it. Let me just turn the little round thing off now because we will be going to the charts in a moment. Uh, where's my target? Okay, yep, all of that's good. Where where do I exit? But on the but then we also need to consider: Do I have blue skies ahead. And what I mean by that trade is, is what is in front of my trade? What might interfere with me? It's absolutely critical that we know that, okay? For an example, pivots. Pivots are predictive. So many traders trade them um, uh, and you've got main and midline pivots, which is the 50% level in between your main pivots. They we bounce off those every day. We also need to consider the open high, low and close. That is also very important. Our major support resistance levels, you'll see the little dots I've got. Um, 
and this is funny, I've only moved over to NinjaTrader six or seven months ago. I was with TradeStation for over 20 years. And I always drew my lines in by hand because even with TradeStation, I didn't get a really good pivot indicator. Anyway, there's a, an indicator, if anyone's got NTA, called Swing. You'll see it on my charts there. So up till three weeks ago, I was still drawing my uh, swing lows and swing highs in just with a little horizontal line manually. But anyway, it's a lot easier now. And major EMAs. This is one of the greatest secrets, best kept secrets. It really is when it comes to trading. Look at your 89 and 200 EMAs on your anchor charts. We bounce off those every day all the time, major, major. Okay, um, for this here, why scalping works so well for me? Smaller profit targets lead to quicker target hits. I only need to hit 200 a day, just three 75, sorry, $75 trades a day. But, you know, generally I'm after my two to 300 a day. So I'll sort of, Look, that's five, six tick trades a day or, or six, five, depends on, and when Delta asked about the uh, the market, the targets that I go for will quite often depend on the volatility in the market. If it's very slow, I might only go for three or four ticks, I'll three, which is 37.50 to $50 a, a, a contract. So. It really depends, and it's not rocket science to work this out. It just depends on the speed of the market. So, uh, very just before we get to the main charts, and where are we here? And we're gonna go to the chart, just a couple of slides down here. This is important. So the chart types that we use. Now, many traders prefer to use time. I don't like time-based charts, Big candles are evil, they really are. I prefer either tick, range or Renko. Now, I will quickly show you if you're a newer trader, tick are great, I always refer to tick and range together. I've got multiple screens, so I'll have my tick charts up as well as range because, as well as, sorry, Renko, my apologies, because Renko is beautiful. Uh, a smooth price action out, but you can lose a lot of valuable information that tick charts will give you. But ultimately, whether it be high Kanashi or Ha charts, which is a combination of Renko and high Kanashi, and I'll quickly show you that in a, those in a moment on live, um, it comes down to what suits you best in the end. Now, in the strategies, it doesn't matter what type of chart. So if you look at the Ha chart over here, um, uh, it's even smoother than a high Kanashi, which is on the next slide. But Renko I love, tick is not as clean. So this is at exactly the same time. And I know we're looking at it very quickly, but what the hard charts will do and Renko and range as well, will smooth out price action for you. However, see that little dip there, beautiful entry, and that's it there. So you can miss out on some, entries. Now, with Ha and Hai Kanashi, Ha's even smoother. It's a combination of Hai Kanashi and Renko. And by the way, here's a pivot here. Um, so that's what we call a midline pivot, selling down into the pivot. But let's get to the charts. So let's look at some potential trades here. All right. So let's, uh, let me just start show you as we set up here, um, what I started with today, why don't we just start from here? Um, oh no, before I do that, I was going to show you, uh, what have I got here? Now this is, by the way, this is a Renko chart set to an open high low close rather than the full body. Okay, so um, some traders like that as well, but this is a tick chart. Now with this tick chart, we are in the Globex session, the after hours market. And this really gets back to once again, learning to adjust the time frames that you're trading. In fact, I've got a formula that I use that we use if you're trading range or Renko. There's a mathematical formula, really easy, to set up your entry and anchor charts. It's a multiplication that we use. But if you're trading tick, 
volume or time-based charts, we've got another um, uh, method that we use, very simple, but what we're looking for is for multiple EMAs. Now, during the Globex session, which we're in now, a 55 to an 89 tick works really well. They're Fibonacci numbers. Now, if you're not a Fib fan, you could be using a 50 or a 100 or a 75. I seriously doubt whether it'd make a huge difference. One of our biggest traders is a trader uh, in Brazil, trades uh, in the main exchange there and the ES. He uses, which I've got here set up, which I'll just show you here, during the New York session, he uses a 500 tick. A 500 is his entry, 1500 is his anchor chart one, and four and a half thousand is his anchor chart two the formulas that I've given him. And he swears by that. Now, by the way, you can see here you've got, and for members in the room, there's your T2. So you can see your T2s, your slingshots. We've got a nice uptrend. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, absolutely. And there will always be, of course, uh, losses. Um, uh, and, and that's the thing. And that's where we've got to, get used to traders, getting back to what we call the probabilities of 20. And that's probably one of the greatest lessons that you'll pick up from Mark Douglas. You see, the individual trade means nothing. Anything can happen. You can have a trader, it can be the best setup in the world, but you can have a trader overseas somewhere with a fat finger sets off the wrong order. And what appeared to be the perfect setup all of a sudden is stuffed up. And yet over 20, and for an example, if you're back testing a strategy, 20 is the minimum you want to test out, is that if it doesn't, if you don't have any sort of decent result over 20, forget the strategy, unless it's a swing trading one and you're happy with that. So you want to really look at 100 trades is really, but you've got to think in trade lots of 20. And that's why it's important that you've got your account size right there, but you'll never risk any more than 2%. Now, what we're looking at here, this is what we call a heart chart. And you can see how smooth this is. See how you have, you have your retracement, these are what we call two Bs just there and there. Um, and so if you look at this, where you've got a shaved uh, top in this case, uh, you wanna ride that all the way down until you get a change in candle color. Or so you've got what we call a shaved bottom there. So you can ride that all the way up, maybe consider exiting. Just here, it had a bit of a pullback. And remember before I said about where is our previous swing highs or swing lows? Now you can see here that we had a swing high over here, swing high, swing high. We went up there and we tested those. Now, by the way, this is just before the market closed, impossible to trade at that time. This is a one tick, forget tra trying to trade it. So if we just go to the market now, let me just um, scroll along here a little. Now, the great thing about the one tick chart is when the market, here we are. So here's a couple of trades that I actually took here. Now, when the market opens, the market opens up at, sorry, so, uh, 1700, sorry, it closes at uh, 1400. I think I gave you the, the wrong time frames before. And opens at 1700 Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. You've got to give the market a few minutes to settle down. Now, just here, by the way, that was three minutes after the market opened and you had just there, that would have been a 2B. What I've seen about the swing lows, see this swing low from when the market closed here, we came down to the tick and then we, bounce stuff it. See up here how I've, this is a 200 EMA overshoot. See how I've shot past the 200. If we were to look at a two tick Renko, okay, this is this is a one tick, you'd find on that time frame we were bouncing off the 200. This is what we call a 200 EMA overshoot. That one there is an entry that I took and uh, I got out with one tick, we hit five ticks, and we'll look at that on the two tick chart. Okay, so we can see here, we wanna be trading in the direction of the trend. Here is another case where 
I shorted here. We came down, we overshot that by a couple of ticks there and I went to break even. Um, both With both targets, I increased the targets and the reason I increased them was this. See down here traders, I had the central pivot. Now, when you're above the central pivot, if you're trending down, uh, I'm told you've got a 92% chance you're gonna come down and kiss the pivot. We actually call it a PM or a T28 trade, a pivot magnet trade. Now, it, it kicks butt, that is, and for those, I started recording, if anyone goes back and watches the recording, you'll see I actually started recording about 20 minutes before we kicked off today, because I fired off a couple of trades and I just wanted to explain those even before the webinar started. You would have heard me say, it's not quite ready for a, a pivot magnet, but we're getting there, okay? Then here was that trade I then took as we started and I just left it in place. We actually ticked down four ticks and I ended up getting stopped out, but we'll talk about that on the chart, on, on the tick two tick chart. But what I wanted to show you was here, is that a lot of traders, you can trade this here as a system within itself, trading in the direction of the trend. So that's a hard chart. So let's now go and look at the standard one tick. Now don't scoff at this, by the way, the experienced traders in the room. You don't know what you don't know. Excuse me one sec, I'll just have some tea, just a moment. And what I mean by that, <clears throat> the one tick Renko can be a fantastic chart to trade when the market's slower. And what's great about it is you've got a smaller stop loss. You see, when I enter a trade, I like to have my stop one tick above or below the swing. If I entered here, I would like to have my stop one tick there. If I entered on this one, I'd like to have my stop one tick below. Now, if you're able to trade, like that's what we call a 34B by the way. So if you trade a 34B and we had a slingshot there, you had one there, that's a 21B, but your best, oh, and of course I've told you are the 34Bs and the 2Bs. Instead of having, if you enter on the close of the first candle after these white ones, okay, up here, you'd only have a maximum of a four tick stop. One, two, three, four. That's only a $50 stop on the big contract. Now, on the other hand, if I have a really deep pullback like here, that's when I wanna wait for the super scalper. In other words, those white paint bars do not appear until the third candle. So whenever you have a retracement, we've got a concept we call it, get ready, get set, go. Meaning whenever we have a, uh, yes, David, are you a member at all? If you go, uh, David just asked, I'll just point that out. So if you go to raise charts, so if you just type in whether you're a member, I'll tell you where it is. Um, so here, um, and even if you're not a member, I'll show you where it is. <laughs> oh, you are a member. Go to the NT8 folder. Uh, so in the general Google Drive, you'll find the NT8 folder. In there, there is a folder there called raise charts. In there, there are a couple of templates there. Look for the micro NQ, I only uploaded that yesterday, I think it was. You're welcome. So price pulled back. So if you're in a slow market, uh, means you've got smaller stop loss and you can hit your target faster. But let's get to this. Let's get to the two tick because um, once again, one tick's great, uh, but you'll probably find today it might be a bit too fast. So this is where we had the Globex open. So let's now get into talking about the strategies and how we trade them. The market opened, it then pulled back, and this is 17 minutes after the market opened, pulled back and that was a 2B. Now I didn't get in till over here, I was out of the room. I come back in, saw a price that had re retraced and I jumped in there. Now, right up here, I got in at a better price, 
all of my anchor charts and let me show you this. So let me just show you the anchor charts exactly what I was looking at. So to give you a good idea. These, and let's just look at the anchor chart one. Let's forget the, three, the two anchor charts. This might confuse newer members because you can do it mighty fine just with the two. So this is what we were looking at. What's the direction of the trend here, traders? Well, we can see on the anchor chart here, anchor chart one, we're in a downtrend. So the Globex market opens, <clears throat> the X open I call it. Price is pulling back and I'm looking for a bounce. You can see that I had a bounce there and I had a bounce here. Now, what's very important is that see how I had a three candle reversal on the higher time frame. Whenever we have that, we want to wait for the candle to close back in the direction of the trend, which it did, okay? And you want to just reconfirm because what you don't want to have is it pulls back, looks like it's reversing, but then it pulls back. It'll get you in a bit later, but it can be a really nice rule to obey. Now I had a bit of a retracement. I then jumped in and it actually hit plus six. Now the tail only hit plus six, which certainly did not guarantee I would be filled. But in this case, I wanted to actually go for a larger target. I wanted to go for eight ticks, which is $100. I was targeting this prior swing low. Was not to be my day initially. It came down, I went to break even, got out at one plus one tick and it reversed. Now, just after that, we then had, as I was typing this in here, Okay, so you can see that actually appeared over a number of seconds as I was typing another 2B set up. Now, if I didn't or hadn't adjusted my stop, as you can see there, I would have easily got my eight ticks. So what's the lesson within that? Keep your trade stats because quite often you'll have a concept of what we call set and forget. You set your stop in, you're going for six ticks, um, don't move your stop until you hit perhaps plus five. Um, I'm a scalper, which means I'll ma actively manage a trade, but sometimes it can bite your bum, okay? It can come back. Now we then had a 2B. So members in the room, look very carefully. Why is that a bet the farm trade? There's your double top, there's your divergence. Now, uh, let me just say this. Bet the farm trades, traders is a trend following strategy which kicks butt, however, bet the farm is a bit tongue in cheek. We still never, ever, ever uh, go past our 2% money management rule. But that was the second entry as I was typing it up and we then, unfortunately I wasn't on that, on that one. We then had uh, a 13B and a 21B set up straight after that as well. Now, this is a, oh no, I didn't take that one. We then had, uh, another 21B, but here's the main one. So let me just talk to you actually about 34Bs and 2Bs. We then had this 2B um, nine minutes before we get got underway today. Now, the reason I stuck with this one, so you see how we're bouncing here on the entry chart and over here I'm bouncing on the anchor chart. Beautiful 2B. What made this even better was, whoops, was down below here. Uh, uh, Delta, these are just um, uh, numberings, uh, numbers that we've given these, okay? And there's rules behind each one. So rather than, it just makes it a lot easier. So, and by the way, if you become a member in the session one folder, there's abbreviation sheets. So we've coded all of these, just makes it easier. But look down below here, see the pivot. We're still quite some distance away from getting a pivot bounce. What you'd be looking for, by the way, is to come down to about here. A pivot bounces, they're about a pivot magnet trades, about a 90% trade, by the way. But you sort of want to be four to five ticks away. But that was your classic 2B just there. And you know what? It wasn't to be. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Okay, you can see there we bounce. Now, generally speaking, for those that love there, this is where, by the way, we then go and put in your, ch your channel. 
and we then check out what's happening with the trend at this stage. And that is where then we'd be looking for longs. Now, we now shot past the 200 EMA. What I want you to notice is, this is what we call the EMA slope indicator, the colors. So you can see they have the three main EMAs there when they're all the, when they're all the same, they have the same color, but you can just use standard EMAs to do that. That one there is a 21B. A 21B is not as high a probability and also a slingshot. The slingshot trade has been around for years. There's nothing unique about it, provided you're trading with the trend. It does really well. And particularly when you see you've got the trend on your anchor chart firing away as well. Now, I want you to notice, see over here on the anchor chart, can you see the tails on the far right? They're called Renko tails. Now, in this particular case, notice how all the prior candles were all closed at the high. So what that means is when it comes to these trades here, you can enter using the rule of one on the first candle that closes. You can enter that, that one and that one. Why? Because all of the prior candles beforehand were closing higher on your anchor chart. Now, if you then get like, see over here, you then get a red candle then plots. What that then means is whenever you have that traders on your higher time frame, you get a reversal candle. You must wait for a candle to close green back in the direction of a trend on your higher time frame. Both of those, as you can see, and by the way, we call these steps. See how we're stepping up? Each one of these steps is one tick or $12.50. Now you would not have been in that trade until there. Even though the candle closed, you've got to allow one extra. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you touched plus eight, very important. Whenever you see a tail touches say plus eight, never assume you got filled, okay? Um, uh, that does not mean you got filmed. So we'll catch up in a moment where price action is, and you'll see in a minute why I'm saying we'd need to be trading the two tickets, really pumping. Now, see this here. What's the direction of the trend here at the moment? Certainly looks like I'm in an uptrend, doesn't it? But look over at your anchor chart here. Can you see how the majority of your EMAs on your right-hand side are under the 200? A very simple rule. When you've got the majority of your EMAs are under a 200 EMA, the bias is to the short side. When you're above, the bias is to the long side. Now here, when you've got your minor time frame, we call this the entry chart, it's looking good, but we, where it's going to be perfect is when on the higher time frame we're above the 200. So I want you to notice here, see how we're pulling back here pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. Now, when you get these large moves like this, here we're pulling back. To go long again, I need a candle on the anchor chart here to close green to either go long, okay, or I need a decent, or, or I need a pullback and a green one to go, sorry, and a green one and followed by red to go short. We'll see that in a moment. Now. Sorry, that doesn't quite make sense. You'll see it in a minute. I'll, I'll catch up with current price action so I can describe it live. Okay, so see how we pull back. Uh, and uh, Delta, so a lot to uh, read, watch and understand. Actually, let me say something about this. Traders, most of you know, I'm into the science of learning and teaching and when it comes to learning how to trade this, very important, you don't get frustrated. What you gotta do traders is write it down, isn't this interesting? Isn't it fascinating, not frustrating? So traders, there is a lot to read, watch and understand. However, what we've also got is the greatest opportunity in the world. We can basically get going for around $1,000. 
on Delta not having to go to you here, by the way. So what I want everyone to, to realize, that's why I say you've got to give yourself that 90 days to 180 days. And what you actually end up having traders is what I call aha experiences all the way along. The unfortunate part is that traders get impatient. They wanna pick this up and be live trading in two weeks and they wonder why they blow their account. You can be live trading, really you can be doing it in 30 to 60 days and you're away. But what kills traders is impatience. So give yourself time and it's a bit like driving a stick shift. I don't know if any, any of you, we call them manual cars down here in Australia. But when you start driving your stick shift, you know, oh, I've got to change, I've got to push the clutch in, the brake, the accelerator, um, look in the rear view, view mirror, use the indicators, um, uh, change the gears. How am I going to do all of this? Yet we pick it up. Um, oh, great. And as Delta said, yes, loving it. Give what the process takes. Beautiful. And that's so important because do you know what? This is what we're looking at here is a simple ABC pattern. And once you learn these, okay, they're really straightforward. There is a slight challenge with this one. And that is this, see how I've pulled back to the 200. See how my 200 is flat. See over on the anchor chart. I will give this one one, I'll call it once as a trade. But if I get stopped here, I would then wait for the EMAs to kick into a trend. Because for current members, those that are new traders looking at joining me, or maybe you trade your own account, flat 200 EMAs are evil, okay? So whenever you see that your EMAs, your moving averages um, are bunched together, you've got to be so careful. The only saving grace with this right now is this. Uh, and let me actually show you this. So if I take a FIB now, now by the way, when it comes to FIB levels, you I don't use them um, uh, actively. I'll draw them in to show, whoops, damn, it's not, it's not what I wanted. Let me go back over here. I'll draw them in just to show members uh, what they're doing. I don't actively, because just visually, you get to see what, it, what it's doing. So see that low to this high? What I had there was a 61 to 76 percent, really more of a 61 retracement. And so the reason these fire off and are still a great trade because you've got hundreds of traders around the world trade fib retracements. It's a bit like your pivot levels, okay? Hundreds trade them. So um, once you break down here, see this 76. Remember before I said. If we get a pullback, then I get a green can, I'll look for a red. What I'd look for then is a 76% area to fail. Once, because the FIB traders, if that drops down below to say 80%, the FIB traders usually give up, stuff it, I'm not going along here. The market usually rallies up, then it rolls over. It's really, the market really is, um, it's it's really predictive because it's based upon what us humans do. So we've got an entry, but let's just talk about this potential entry here. This ABC setup, which is what it is. Now we had a deep pullback. So when the candle on your anchor chart one closes, the see how here we'd had these reversal. You must have the candle reverse. Look down here, even on the anchor chart, I've also got a slingshot trade. Now, this is only a 70% trade. It's not an 80, 85%. Why? Because I've got flat EMAs. So in a minute, we're gonna hunt for a live trade, which will give us the 80 to 85%. Candle closes, which means I don't get in till Sorry, everyone, let me just go back to this. I don't get in till over here, okay? Now, let's just talk entry. So I'm in now. The beautiful part about Ninja Trade, oops, I haven't got it there. You'll see that when we get to the current price, we've, is, I've got, we've got an indicator called the bar status. It'll tell us when the candle's going to close on the anchor chart one. So we can put a buy stop in, and so we're automatically stopped into the market. 
Now, this is really basic stuff I'm gonna give you now because it's so easy to learn. So here's my entry. Where do I want my stop? Ideally, I wanna put my stop loss one tick below. But if the market takes off, I will stay with a fixed stop if it's moving really quickly. So entry, can you remember what one of the other rules we have? Do I have blue skies ahead? What I mean by that, what's in front of my trade? Do I have a pivot? Uh, am I buying perhaps into a major EMA? And where are my swing highs and swing lows? Look over here. See, I've got a swing high. I'm way down here. I've got an ABC setup, which means I've got a great probability of making higher highs here, okay? If I'm gonna go for a larger target, now's the time to do it. But one thing I failed to say earlier, traders, when we're talking about targets, remember on all of those trades we had earlier, the three trades, or was it two, the yeah, three trades I'd fired off, if I think they hit one hit plus six, one hit plus uh, five, one hit plus four. The ES after hours, four to five tick trade, you get all the time. So say if you're trading, two contracts. I recommend you get the cash register ring by taking one off at four or five ticks. Trading the two Bs of a 34 Bs, they're an 80, 85% trade. Get the cash register ringing. Then you can consider either lowering the stop or going to break even once you hit your five to six. But then when you get a retracement, you get stopped out. If it didn't hit six ticks, you're still in the money. Now, with this particular trade, we would be targeting up here, the swing high. Now, what's the next thing we wanna know? Well, here we wanna know where's our pivot. And this is where with the Ninja Trader platform, I've got there, it tells me it's where all the pivots are and where the open high low and close is by using the data box. Okay, so my data box here tells me where my pivots are and also where my prior highs are. And the reason that's important traders is this white line is based upon the close of the market, the prior close. So it tells me it's up there. And just above there, I've got a midline pivot. So these are both what we call price magnets. So the first area would be this one. Remember earlier I said uh, the trade I went for that hit I think it hit plus six ticks and I was going for eight. I was targeting the swing high with trend, but the market decided to turn. So let's see how we go with this one. So if we had have entered now and bang. So there's 10 ticks, that's $125. Now, when it comes to trading is with your tick values, and this is where it comes down, the different size accounts and how many ticks we're after. So remember we're after a minimum of two to $300 a day here. So trading this particular account, I'll be after two to 300 per contract. So now we've come up and we've hit this high. Now, one thing I wanna point out, remember earlier we were talking about what's in front of us. So am I going to get a rejection here? Time and time again, you'll get uh, a reversal here, or at least the market stalls. Remembering just above, if you're gonna stay with the trade or trail, you've got this and you've got this up in front of this. And let's just see what happens. Now, I'm now going through the prior close. Guess what my next target is? And I'll go here if I don't get a bounce of some sort. There it is right there. So we've hit the pivot right to the tick. Now, unfortunately here, that become a pivot magnet trade, but I did not have any pullback or retracement there to give me an entry, except if you are trailing there. Now, what am I now waiting for? What am I now looking for? So when we go up and hit a pivot, if you are trading divergence traders, the very best divergence trades you'll ever have are when you have a pivot bounce. Okay, uh, I'm, let me just quickly check. If I've got a 
trade there. I'm just gonna fire off, just go long here on a trade and we'll look at it. Okay, I'm filled on a trade and, and look, we'll just see how we go and I'll come back to it in a moment. Uh, where are we? Actually, I'll have to just check my stop here. All right, we'll just see how we go with this one. I've missed out on all the others, but let's just see. Now, I'm just long one contract, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Oh, damn it, you're turning. Uh, we'll come back to that anyway. Let me turn this off uh, for a moment. We'll come back to that. Uh, so now we come up to the pivot. So what I was saying about divergence, see here how we've hit the pivot. So with the divergence trade, we can see here that I've got a higher high on price just there and see how I'm, it's maybe hard for you to notice, but I've got a lower high on the right hand side on my MACD. Now traders, this is what we call a 1D and the reason it's a 1D, I don't have any divergence on this time frame on my entry chart. But one thing I do want to check is do I have divergence on my anchor chart too? And I do. So, and that was a mistake I just took taking that other one because of divergence. Now I'll explain that when we get to it in a moment. But just here, oh hang on, wrong spot. Now that's the next one. Okay. So here what we had there was a 1D. Now it's a 1D with a pivot bounce. Okay, see how we're bouncing off the pivot? And in a moment, we'll be live in a sec. So we'll look for some live trades. Um, so let me just expand. No, so then we pull back. Let me expand this and I'll calm down in a sec. So we pull back. Now what am I now waiting for? <clears throat> Excuse me. See this here, traders, this is what we call a fanning of the anchor charts, okay? So this is called a fanning of the anchor chart. Ah, uh, Gene, the reason we take that is that was a 2BD, okay? That was a 2BD, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, uh, so just there, we've got here, uh, we've got a fanning of the EMAs. See how we're above the 200, so that is great. So let's, so what we're looking for here is a retracement. As we pull back, now remember the concept of get ready, get set, go. Now you'll actually see a white candle here, but remember you wouldn't see that white candle normally until three candles. Uh, now see that there, you would that's a green candle, that's your get ready to go long. Why? Well, you can see traders, we've pulled back to the 200 EMA just there. All of our EMAs are above the 200. So that there is going to be what we call a 2B. However, you're getting ready for the trade, but then you get another red candle. You get, you just there, you would see another green candle. That's your get ready. This is your get set and this is your go. Well, actually not really. And I'll tell you why. Remember the key rule I mentioned to you that whenever you have a retracement, uh, where is that one? That's over here. Remember I said, whenever you've got a retracement, always wait for your anchor chart one candle to close back in the direction of the trend. So you had one, two, you had how many candles? So that means I would not have been until up here instead of the candle beforehand. Very, very important. Now, so my entries here, where do I wanna see my stop? Ideally, one tick below. So let's now fire off. Now here traders, let's talk targets again. Note here, my EMAs are in an uptrend, uptrend on my entry. Let me just expand that again here, go back to this. So here's my bounce and we call this, this would actually be what we call a 2B as that one was, even though you had a slight overshoot. What's in front of me? Well, there I've got, we've already broken through that. Okay, so there we've got the pivots and we've got the swing high. We always look at where is the last major swing high? Okay, see this one here? That's my last major swing high. 
this one here, this is my last major swing high. Now, we don't normally go straight up, but let's just see. So now we've come up to that. And I'm about to show you where I just made, and <laughs> I was just thinking for the members in the room that are in my trading room, no, we should not rush in the trades without checking this. So I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So on our entry chart, we've now come up here. This is what we call a pivot bounce again. See this just here. Okay, so what I've got here is a pivot bounce again, and that's a little double top. See how my MACD is rolling over? Let's have a look now at the anchor charts. Now here, up here, price action, I'm above Gene for 200. See for 200 there? So I'm actually above the 200. So here, all of my EMAs are above the 200. So just there, there was divergence and I had divergence here. But look over here, what happened just there. I also had divergence on the highest time frame. Traders, this is what we call a 3D. A 3D is basically the highest time frame, is, is really the, the highest quality divergence trade you can take. Okay, so I had basically slightly high high. Now, see on the, let me close this for a moment. See this width here. When you're trading, we call that a big picture. Okay, it's basically a double top. It doesn't matter you're a few ticks up above it. Much more obvious on your anchor charts. That's why it's very important. If ever you're just trading with um, an entry chart that you actually regularly check your anchor charts. And one little tip I'll give you, you can actually, if you put a 600 EMA on your entry chart, that approximates, uh, will give you an approximate of the 200 on your anchor chart one. Let me just quickly show you this. Why would you do that? Well, say if you don't have multiple screens. So let me just go down here. Let me just quickly show you this. Whoops. Did it a couple of times, never mind. So let me just make that, oops, 600, I need to make that. 600 and let me make a black. Where are we here? Uh, where's black? Up the top here, there's black. Let's just make this black. Now, it's not exact, but it'll give you a good guideline. Where are you? Ah, see just here, see that black? line there. So what this is telling me is I'm above the 200 EMA. See how it's black? I'm above it on my anchor charts. Okay, so that gives me the guideline there. Now, of course, it's easy if you've got multiple charts there. So where was the error in jumping up? And I kick myself when I'm talking and trading at the same time. So that there was actually a 3D short. So a 3D short is one of the strongest EMAs, or sorry, one of the strongest divergence trades you can actually have. You've got three time frames. Now, where do we usually, where does price usually retrace to when you've got a 3D? Back to the 200 EMA on your entry chart. So whenever you've got a 3D, we target the 200. So that was this here I was jumping in on. Now, we call these, by the way, a 2BD. What's a 2BD? It's a standard 2B, as we had one here and we had one here. We put a D after it, which means it was after major divergence. There are, Russell, are you smiling? I can see you smiling. And Tom, <laughs> all right, but D after it. Okay, because it means these are a much lower probability trade. Okay, and what happened? And down we come down to the 200 EMA. Okay, like clockwork, you come back down to the 200 EMA. So what do we now have? Well, let's look for a trade now. So just there, by the way, you can see there, you've actually had a long trade here. This is still, you could have gone long here. If you went long, your stop would be 
one tick below. And it formed a double bottom. We also call that a bet the farm trade. So you can see here, price came down and see the logic to why we keep our stop one tick below. We came down and we tested that. In fact, right now, this right here is what we call a bet the farm trade again. See how I've got a double bottom with divergence here against the 200. So that there is a trade we're meant to be in on as a bet the farm. Now, where would have our entry been? What's the rule when you have two candles close lower on your anchor chart? Let's just hide the, the second one, the anchor chart. What's our rule? See how we had two candles close lower? What do we do? We wait for the anchor chart one candle to close back in the direction of the trade, which it did up there at uh, 49.25. Okay, so 49.25 right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's touched eight ticks. Now remember, we still would have been actually in that trade from way over here at double bottom. Now, what was the point I was going to bring up then? It's something I was going to say about the two, about the bet the farm. We then had that additional reverse. Ah, so here's what we've got to watch now. Because this was such major divergence, this could easily turn into an ABC reversal. Okay, so could have, this can easily turn. Remember how I showed you how I drop a fib level in and we look here. Um, now, see you've got that point there. When you're trading um, using your anchor chart, your entry chart, you get a lot more noise here. See that there? But on the Renko there, you can see it's much smoother here. Quite often after you have such a, a big move up, your price comes down, it bounces, and then it can roll over. Now, one other thing I'll show you at this stage to go with this is this is where also we'd be looking at what's happening on the 89 tick chart. And the reason we look at the 89 tick is that once again on the Renko can smooth everything out, but we can miss out on a lot of really valuable information. So we can see there that was the bounce that we had there. And quite often you'll get in um, a lot earlier on a tick chart than what you will on your Renko charts. Now, remember our last swing high, let's go back to this. And I know it sort of looks a bit messy with chopping backwards and forwards, but I want to try to show you all of this. Let me get back to this two tick chart here. Where was, from this entry, where was our last major swing high? Not there, that is your last major swing high. So if you're trailing, even though we may not make it, yes, we might stall at that one, but your last major swing high, which also happens to be the Globex high, is just there as well. Now, for those members that, that are there, that right there, what is that? That's your 13B just there. So that was your 13B just there. See the arrows traders, um, what that signifies is a crossover of 13 EMA and the 21 EMA. And look what's just happened there. Let me just draw in a line here. Remember I said about the swing high? Look what price action did. We went up there and we tested that swing high. See how we stalled there for a moment, right at that swing. So it was one, two, look how many ticks that. That's basically 20 ticks there. Uh, that's, two, that's a $250 move there. And you may be wondering what's that cyan line there? That's a prior day's high. Just there, that's the close, that's a high. These are standard indicators, by the way. Now it's moving quite quickly. So what we're looking for now is a retracement and we'll look for what we call a 2B. Let me stop this from moving around this one here now. 
So we've now rallied up. Let me look at my anchor chart. We're retracing. Let me just look at this now. Let me just quickly look at this. Okay, we've come up now. This actually could be a challenging area. So you'll see before the market closed, this is before it closed earlier this evening. We went up there and we hit the prior day's high. So we're right now at the prior day's high. This lowers the probability of our trades just there. Now we'll come back to this, but let me just go back to the PowerPoint for a moment and I'll have this going on another screen because if I get a pullback, uh, I need a deep pullback. And the reason being, I'm not gonna take a shallow pullback because I'd be buying directly into the day's high and the prior day's high, which can be a tricky area. Now just here, members, uh, for members here, that is a slingshot and a 21B just there. That is a slingshot and a 21B. The best of the best trades are where we pull back to the 34 and we have a 2B. So that is a 21B just there. All right, let's come back to this. So a couple of things I wanted to show you is on the markets that you can trade. There are so many different markets you can trade. And I sort of mentioned that you can be trading everything from you know, uh, stocks, futures, Forex, it really doesn't matter, okay? You have the same setups. Oil, you can trade the exotics. You, know, you can trade, gold's a great market, by the way, uh, if you've got the account size. Um, then you've got um, the energies, you've got Eurex, the European markets. You've got multiple markets to trade. The initial thing though is the size of your account when you first get going. So very quickly, before we go back to the charts, I just wanna quickly um, uh, tell you how you can get my coaching for only $1.10 an hour. Let me explain. So I've got some of my one-on-one -on -one clients here and some of my general members here. So for one-on-one -on -one coaching now, I charge 6,997. Now, that's only 474 an hour, it's 16 hours. Now, that's no no more than what a good accountant or attorney would charge. You know, I laugh. I've got investors or, or traders, they say they've got a two or $300,000 account and they bucket that, yet they'll go and spend 10 grand with their account getting the right tax advice. It, 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 it just blows me away um, how traders think that way. And I can set them up for life with these setups, but anyway, I've got a challenge. I've only got a very, I run two live trading rooms and other um, coaching sessions as you're about to see. I'm very short of time. So the option, the second option, which is only gonna, as you'll see, a dollar 10 per hour is I run two two hour private group coach, coaching sessions every week and three times a week, I run two hour live trading room sessions where we're trading live. And for 15 traders a month, I've got a New York session that I run, but that's restricted to 15 traders. They pay more for that, but I also give them one-on-one -on -one coaching. So we won't talk about that today. So very quickly, feedback from my members. Um, love it, you're so right, doubled my account. Um, another excellent client, I could go on and on. You know, look, um, one loss, six winners, Look, I could just go on and on. Uh, Jan, who was in the room before, Jan wrote me this some time ago, 50 plus teachers, um, finally got it, thank you. Look, I just go on and on with these testimonials, particularly ones. Uh, now this one's interesting. This is, remember I spoke to you about the, um, the pivot bounces? Now Ali, who uh, wrote this one, so Ali is actually a professor. And as you got here, this is uh, on the 17th of March at a 40 tick stop, last five days, 90% win ratio, 34 Bs and two Bs, sometimes a T28, but T28 is the pivot magnet trade, 90% win rate, and that's fairly typical. Um, charts from members, they send them in, um, what just showing their trades, what they set up, et cetera. So, let me talk to you about what the Inner Circle Platinum Program consists of, which is only 
a dollar ten an hour. Now traders, make no mistake, this is a ten thousand dollar program because I'm going to give you basically every indicator you need, and just just there's over as you're about to see over thirty odd powerpoints, and you don't have to learn them all, such as great trade setups. I give you dozens upon dozens of charts, which we actually go through in coaching sessions, explaining exactly what you're looking for and why why you're looking for that. So, first of all, if you're not already, so if you're a member and not in the live trading room, hang around because I'll show you the discount you get. But if you're not a member of the Day Traders Fast Track program, you receive the Day Traders Fast Track program itself. Now, uh, traders, it's described by members uh, as a gold mine. This is uh, what it looks like in my Google Drive. In each one of these is indicators, handouts, PowerPoints. Uh, there's literally dozens of folders here. And actually what you've got to watch is that if you're new to trading, you don't get bogged down here, okay? Because you can spend hours and hours, if not days, going through this. Oh, by the way, this is how long I've been running this. This is, uh, <laughs> this is 2016, my daughter, she just graduated. She started university this year. So uh, traders, the, this is really a literal gold mine, the last trading program you'll ever need. So the Day Traders Fast Track program gives you all of the handouts, strategies, et cetera, that you need. There's even, I've even hired um, a hypnotherapist to actually do and record um, coaching sessions or um, what's the word for it, hypnotherapy sessions for my traders. So in the four strategies for mastering your mind, you'll find the sessions that my hypnotherapist recorded uh, for the members. There's over 300 videos. Once again, you focus initially on the 34B and the 2B. There are hundreds of marked up charts with commentary. I've already mentioned and showed you the Google folders. There's hundreds of handouts. There's over 30 PowerPoints and I'm constantly developing. As I come up with a, a strategy that complements, now that's the other thing. I talk to my members regularly about what we call the shiny object syndrome. That's looking for the next best thing. What I look at is, is there a way that we can improve what we're already doing? And it's called, can I? Constant and never ending improvement. If you're into scalping, I've got specialized scalping sessions and handouts. There's reference guides and cheat sheets. I've also mentioned to you about the spreadsheets. So there's three of those that we, we've got. We've got one there on how quickly you can compound your account. <clears throat> it's not there as a ridiculous tool, it's there to be sensible because this is a business. I've got uh, uh, one there on another one there for how many trades a day realistically do I need to take? Traders, we need to know that. You've got to know where you stand. And of course, how much capital do I really need to kick off? And as you can see there, you can start with it $500 and build. We've already pretty much mentioned that one. So uh, where are we here? So uh, the next thing here is, and this is the thing, is that as I say here, winning traders are willing to do the, the things that losing traders won't do. You've got to be a student of the market. And this is where traders think I can pick up a book and or watch a YouTube video and they're traders. They've got no idea. And that's where it comes down to the private group coaching sessions. So each week I run two live hour coaching sessions. So they are recorded if you can't make it. And in those sessions, we cover step by step going through, we just had a 34B by the way, just set up perfectly, that was a 34B. We go through the strategies, the setups, etc. And I've been running these sessions for years now. And for an example, if we look at tomorrow's session, we're now into May. So you can see I've been running these a long time. Now in the May session, we're in starting off with session one. For any new members that are here or anyone that joins, and by the way, you can download the document, 
to allow you, allow you to join with the special I'm about to give you. It's in the go to webinar folder just there. But we're in session one tomorrow. And oh, sorry, what I was gonna say, I upload the recording into here, three hours after we run each live session. But here are the handouts for tomorrow's session. We don't get through all of these, we never do. But for an example, we'll be looking at trading the 2B, how we trade the 2B. We look at the MES, the MNQ. Okay, are you struggling mentally? We've got dozens of handouts we'll go through. This is just a small folder um, uh, where we cover, we spend a lot of time on the psychology of trading. Once again, the traders that don't go through this are going to struggle. And this is the disappointing thing where so many traders just want the easy road, if you like. And the only place that I know where success comes before work is in a dictionary. We cover psychology of trading, trading platforms, brokers. Once again, two two-hour sessions every week uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So every Tuesday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't uh, attend that session, um, uh, they are recorded. Now, the next thing is the live trading coaching room. That's where the rubber meets the road. And that's where you get to watch me trade for basically two hours. And that's why I'm explaining live where I enter, where to place your stop, where to ex exit. Now, they are recorded as well because the hours may not suit everyone. Now, in these sessions, of course, uh, yes, it will, uh, Jared, you'll, uh, the staff will send you, send you the link, mate. So, the 2B stats, uh, this is one of our members, 13 wins, two losses, 86%. Ah, look at this here, every 2B, you'll see this consistency. We're short on the last 21B. Uh, nice little profit on two 34Bs. Uh, four trades, four wins. Uh, April just on, and this is a standard joke in the room, I don't charge enough, okay? And the members will tell you this time and time again. Now, so there, the, the whole purpose of a live room is to watch me trade real time and I explain every detail of it. As well as that, you're able to type in the questions uh, as I have set up. So now we specialize in that in those rooms on the micros, basically exactly the same trading on the big contracts. Most of the members have micros, so we're either trading the micro ES or the NQ, but once again, you're applying the exact same rules to uh, any market. So my inner circle, for less than a dollar ten an hour, there are three components. First of all, if you're not already a member of the Day Traders Fast Track program, you get um, the website price is 197. You get the Day Traders Fast Track program. All of my indicators are free. 200 hours of, of online learning, etc. Plus, you get six months in my private group coaching sessions. That is eight live and recorded, and when I say live, you can attend the live sessions on the website, you'll see that's also $97 a month. Three is six months in my live trading room. Now, the room runs from, on average, between either four or 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the first thing in the morning. Okay, so one week we run it at 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., the next week we, we run, run it, let me get that out right, from 5 a.m. M to 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's three sessions a week and they are recorded once again. So the total value of that, uh, and I've already mentioned the hours, so usually, by the way, we've we've upped it, make it, we've made it one hour long later now. So it's 4 a.m. to 6. For an example, today uh, or tonight's session, or in the morning for most of my colleagues in the US, it's uh, five to 7 a.m. all this week. Okay, now as an added bonus, I'm gonna double it. That is for the first 10 that join me today, instead of six months, I'm gonna make it 12 months. So you get 12 months of coaching in the twice a week live coaching room. 
you get 12 months to my live trading room three times a week. And you get, of course, the, um, uh, the Day Traders Fast Track program. And I'll give you a copy of the last 12 months of recordings to the private group coaching program. Now, all of that you get for $497. Now, now that's less than $2.10 for each two hour session or less than $1.10 or $1.05, I should say, for each hour of live coaching. There is nothing else like it. How can I do it? Well, I've got at least 100 members in each session. It makes it economical there. Now, for those that are already members, um, uh, you can save a further $100. That is, it's $397, gives you a 12 month membership to the live trading room and the private group coaching sessions. So in total, you've got 96 sessions over the year and you've got 144 two hour live trading room sessions. And that's only $1.66 for each two hour session. Traders, if you wanna truly master the art of day trading, this is it. There's nothing else to buy. Now, what about the New York hour session? Well, that's something that I run every eight weeks. So that's for members. We only take 15 members, it's $997. But in that case, uh, I speak to every member individually. It's a very hands-on, uh, my members there send in their um, report cards. It's a much more hands-on group. But seriously, if you're serious about your trading career, you can download the link to join, and we're gonna go back to the charts for a moment and I'll answer some questions that have come up. So you can see that you can download, yes, I wanna join. Traders, jump on and get the 12 months instead of a six months. Jump on the end of this session and make sure you secure your 12 month membership, including the Day Traders Must Fast Track program. I'm not even gonna ask members in the room to put a comment in, because if I read them out, you probably wouldn't even believe them. Trust me, you really wouldn't. So let's get back to the charts for a minute. So download that before we close out and join today and get your discount. Let's just have a quick look for a couple of minutes and I'll just answer some of the questions here. Are the best markets to trade? Well, it comes down to your capital, really. I love the ES and I love oil. However, CL has been very, very fast. And yes, you need about four to 5,000, up to 8,000 to trade that. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the micro on oil. Okay, it's, it's, it's different than say the ES micro, the NQ, uh, where they've got a market maker, I believe, running the CL and there's quite often delays in it. I really don't like it. Uh, yes, all the PowerPoints are included. Uh, I think I pretty much answered this one. Realistic time frame. Um, look, give yourself at 90 to 180 days. This can set you up for life traders. You know, approach it. You know, I, I get fascinated. People will think it. Uh, you know, they'll think taking 90 to 180 days to learn how to trade a setup is a long time. That's to where you can you can really you can see it in your in your sleep. Yet they'll work 30 years for a boss and retire broke. You know, this can truly set you free if you're willing to put the work in. Uh, no, I and I've also covered, there's no indicators to buy. Now, uh, what? Do you, so I support basically every platform, but I don't have custom indicators for MT4. And that's the only thing. With the Renko on MT4, uh, I've got a website there. Um, I've uh, got a website, sorry, a link to a website where you can buy a really good Renko indicator for $50. Where, um, uh, what was I gonna say there, where the Renko that I've got on my website, it's not that good. I don't get anything from it. By the way, we've got a, just right now, look at the 34B. That was a 34B just there. This is a 34B. Now, with this 34B setting up, it's off the back of some major divergence. See how I've made a higher high on price? See how I've made a lower high on my MACD? Higher high on price, 
and big picture, see how my MACD is dropping away there. 34 Bs in this instance are a much lower probability trade. Okay, so this is a lower probability. Now that was a 34B, you had a 21 there, 21 there, 34 there. One of the greatest mistakes traders, traders make is not waiting for this. And, and what we've got before us right now, and see what I mean about these reversals. So whenever you've got major divergence, and this is why traders in the end, I encourage you initially not to trade divergence. However, you still need to understand divergence because of this very reason now. Now you, your stop would have been one tick below. You're not stopped out yet, but not too far. Now, we call these trades, uh, and it's not even a 2B yet. As we pull back down here, this would become a 2BD. There, the 2BDs, they'll still make money, but they're only a 65, 70% trade. But you can see your 34 Bs in a strong trend are fantastic. So what we look for is this, with a 34 B bounce here, that's that one just here. See how we had a two candle reversal there? What are we waiting for once again, traders? We're waiting for that candle to close back in the direction of the trend, which would have been at 55, 75, which would have been here. So when we look at a reversal, and for members that are in the room, remember when we're looking for a reversal on the anchor chart, there's a couple of things we're looking for. Number one, do I have a rule of one entry? Do I have a short-term stochastic hook? And does the long-term stochastic support the trade? Three simple things. Has the candle closed? Short-term stochastic and does the long-term stochastics uh, confirm the trade? Yes, it does, and away we go. What's great about this particular, looking at these three time frames, or if you're a brand new trader, you might wanna just consider the two until you're up to it, is this is what we call a sweet spot. When you have all three time frames trending in the same trade direction. Now, let me point this out to you. See how we've made a lower high just there. So when we make a lower high, this is where we're then taking a guesstimate of where we may go. But that there, traders, and for the existing members in the room, that is your T10. A T10 is when we've had a major high, okay, you've got major divergence, your long-term stochastic is trending down, and you get a short-term stochastic hook. That's called a T10 entry. Now, where you'd usually, uh, let me just turn one of those off, where you would target uh, that there is the 89 EMA. So when you have a T10, we're targeting the 89 EMA. As you can see, it's moving here. Do not trade a T10 unless it's after major divergence. Now, I started to say this earlier. The other thing here is, see the little bar countdown timer. Now, what this is telling me is when the candle's going to close. So in this particular case over here, when would I know when to go long on that 34B. Well, the, the, the bar status countdown timer, say if that was over here, is telling me the candle's gonna close at 59.50. I've got a beautiful 34B setting up. So I simply right click, then go down to, um, oops, I've turned it off here, so it's not showing. Normally here, if I've got it turned on, it'll right click and allow me to then, I can put a buy stop in and just adjust it at the level I want to go, okay? So I can adjust it. And so when the candle closes, I'm automatically in a trade. Uh, Aaron, so I've got a question using TradingView. Since I have no tick charts, would, doesn't TradingView have tick charts? I didn't know that. Um, uh, would I use candles or Renko on a time chart? Um, Mate, I would look at, uh, I'm very surprised I don't have tick charts. And, and that's the thing, um, 
if you don't have the right platform, Aaron, are you a member, Aaron, by the way? On my Google Drive, if you are a member, there is a trading view folder. Oh, okay, so you've been with me a couple of years. Sorry if I don't recognize your name. <laughs> 10,000 members, I, I lose track. Um, so, okay, so you've got it loaded. So, um, mate, look, uh, you send me a screenshot. Drop me an email, I can answer it if you like. Now remember here traders, our target here would be down here. Now drop in a channel link. Oh, you're welcome, Aaron. So see here, I took that channel from there down to that reversal candle. Now remember I mentioned my target would be the 89. Now this is something that's absolutely amazing about this. Traders, when we come, assuming we pull back to the 89, if we break the 89, do you know what our next level will be? For 200. It, it happens every single day. Oh, thanks, Robert, you're welcome. Okay, okay, excellent, mate. So it happens every single day. When you break for 200 and we're rolling over, you'll come down and then you get usually what we call a 200B, okay? We see it every day. So we're actually, some of these EMAs, uh, it's quite magical how, you know, what actually happens. Now, what is also important with all of these setups, your 34B, your T10s, your 2Bs, they're mechanical and rules-based. What you've got to work out is and learn, do I have a trend? That is, when we start to go sideways, like here, this is the area we've got to be cautious of. So that's where if it's totally flat, I'll execute one trade if I get stopped out then in that area, I'll wait for a trend to continue, okay? Now, the purple and the blue, um, uh, no, Gene, I don't. So, so as far as that there, I know what the EMA is, that's just automatic fanning. So when I, I don't have a stack, yeah, so that just tells me when I'm starting the fan. So what I'm looking for really then is a fanning on two time frames. Okay, I'm really looking for both my entry and my anchor chart one. So traders, we've been going two hours. Let's just quickly see where we are here. Now, this is where we'd want to be very cautious here. Once again, we've pulled back here. Uh, David, um, uh, simply uh, email support or drop me an email, trader at I'm a day trader. Uh, that there's been a new security upgrade with 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 the um, what do you call it the uh, uh, Google Drive, and so a lot of members are having that challenge in, in accessing. Just drop it in. My support staff will send you um, a new login. Now, uh, this here uh, for members in the room, this is a 2B. We're bouncing off for 21. It is actually a 2BD. Why is that a 2BD? Let's go through the rules again. Have I got a trend? Yes. I'm bouncing that middle line, that's a 21. I'm bouncing off for 21. I've got a short-term stochastic hook and my long-term stochastic is overbought. Where would my stop go? One centered, one tick below. Where would my target be? The swing high. Now, this 34B was straight after major divergence. This is a 2BD, straight after major divergence. So it's a 2B, which means what? It's a lower probability trade. Be very cautious if you're trading. Now, what if we now waited here, we had another 2B set up down here. We'd wanna definitely take that one, okay? And we actually call that, and I, I, <laughs> the, the uh, um, Ali named it a 2BD complex. <laughs> All it means is the second 2B that sets up. Okay, that's getting a bit beyond it anyway. But traders, 34Bs and standard 2Bs of a trade you want. All right, traders, we will finish up. So please join. Remember, you can download uh, the join now. Uh, once again, you've got to, um, a whole year of coaching handouts live trading, okay? So um, uh, you can join, download the document for those that are already members for 397 for the year it gives you 
to all of the coaching sessions. So uh, traders, thank you very much for uh, attending and uh, uh, look forward to uh, having you on board. Uh, great, thanks Rick, much appreciated. Mark, I'll probably see you tonight, mate. <laughs> We're in our next session. Thanks everyone. Cheers everyone, thank you.